Hello, this is a short lecture about lateralization of cerebral function. What that means is that the left hemisphere, the left cortex, takes on different roles, different functions than the right hemisphere, or right cortex. But before we get into some of these specializations, let's talk about a really common myth in neuroscience. The myth is that people, by a personality trait, are more left brain or more right brain. People talk about people being left brain as being more analytical, more scientific, more mathematical. Or somebody who's right brain, boy, that person's so right brain, that's the idea that they're creative, artistic, emotional. We don't, uh, we don't have good evidence that that's true. A lot of this came about um, from, well, this, um, this really kind of interesting book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. It came out in 1981, and it's really, you know, it's about that idea of getting in touch with your creative side. But there's been a lot of studies about this. Um, MRI studies, uh, mostly, about how pe when people are solving creative problems or analytical problems, and we don't see differences between people on the function of their left side of the, of the uh, hemisphere and the right hemisphere. I mean, sure, it makes for great images. Boy, I did some searching for images of left brain, right brain, come up with these really beautiful images about the brain. But um, it doesn't mean, though, that there isn't specialization. The myth is, is that people, by their nature, are left brain and right brain. But in fact, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere communicate consistently if you're doing an emotional task or you're doing an analytical, solving math, all, doing language. They're interconnected and they're connected um, highly through the corpus callosum, that large track of myelinated axons. Well, let's look at this hemispheric lateralization. What is specialized in the left and right hemisphere. So the idea of uh, hemispheric lateralization, again, is that the left hemisphere is more active when the person, when a person or an animal is doing certain cognitive tasks or motor tasks, and the right hemisphere is more active at other times. Now, hemispheric lateralization is very common, not just in humans, but in most animals. And there's a lot of reasons why we might think that hemispheric lateralization is important. It might be important in uh, other animals for social animal communication. Really important if animals are living together that they connect with each other. And, it, and lateralization uh, might help in that communication, nonverbal for many animals. It may help animals split attention. If an animal is eating some food, but it also has to attend to its surroundings so it does, doesn't get eaten by a predator, that might serve a good function of having one side of the brain taking on one role and another side of the brain taking on another. We've also seen that this might help in faster reaction times. If we don't have to spread everything out all over the, the brain, what's called equal potentiality, but we get a little specialized, things can happen a little faster. Again, there's a lot of theories to the advantage of sort of splitting up the tasks on the left and right hemisphere. Well, you might be familiar with lateralization or specialization. Uh, here are some common ones. I mean, we know that the primary motor cortex on the left side controls the right side of the body. So activity over here is going to control the right side of the body. And the right side of the primary motor cortex is going to affect the left side. It's the same for the sensory uh, somatosensory cortex. So the left somatosensory cortex is going to be um, active when there is sensory information coming from the right side of the body. And the right side is active when the left side is stimulated for, for the sense of, let's say, touch. We also know the visual field. Our left visual field is processed by the right, the right visual cortex. We get a crossing over at the optic chiasm. And the right visual field, things to the right of the center of our vision, is processed by the left, right? Specialization. We also know that the auditory cortex does the same thing. Things coming in the left ear actually split up, so some of it stays um, 
ipsilateral on the, on the same side, but a lot of it is transferred over and is processed by the contralateral side. Hearing something in the left ear goes and is processed quite a bit by the right auditory cortex. Okay, another common lateralization for really a complex function is the left hemisphere for most people is really involved quite a bit in language. For example, Broca's area on the left side is important in creating um, verbal communication, having a lot to do with speech. So damage to this area and people have a difficult time speaking. Wernicke's area, way over here, also on the left hemisphere, is for comprehension of speech. And it's actually really the communication between these two that are really functioning in language. People with damage to the left side of their brain because of stroke or injury oftentimes have problems with language. Now this is mostly the case. About 95% of right-handed people have a specialization of language on the left side of their brain. About 70% of left-handed people, and oftentimes left-handed people, we see a lot more a bilateral, the left and right taking a big role in language. The right hemisphere is also um, important in language. It, it's not for the comprehension of the words, but for maybe the meaning and the emotional content of the word for understanding the, the importance of what the person is saying. The right hemisphere is also important in visuospatial skills. Let me say, for example, if you want to reach out and grab for a glass of water, the right hemisphere is spending a lot of time looking at where your head is and your hands are in three-dimensional space, helping to guide your hand to get that glass of water. So that's really important. Also, like I said, social communication, empathy, nonverbal cues, really important. Well, let's look at that picture up there on the right. Now, is that person right here, are they happy or are they sad? Just what are you feeling? What are you feeling? Take a guess. I want to hear it. Okay. So that's what you think the, that person is feeling. What about that person? What are they feeling? How, are they, how do they feel? So these two images of a face are actually just mirror images. But this is on your left visual field right here. And this eye and this frown are really being processed by your right hemisphere a little bit more. And so you're a little bit more in tune to their emotion. Most people will look at this top image and they'll say, that person's a little sad because they're really focusing on this here person looking at this one will be processing the smile just a little bit more and say, yeah, the one on the bottom seems happy, the one on the top seems sad, okay? And that's the idea of the left, the left visual field on this, on this side of the face is processed by the right hemisphere a little bit more in touch with nonverbal communications of emotions. Okay, now we have a phenomenon called hemispatial neglect. Now this can happen when somebody gets damage to the right parietal lobe shown here. This oftentimes happens in strokes, but it can also happen in, in damage because of an injury. And hemispatial neglect is kind of an odd phenomenon. It's really where somebody is uh, neglecting the left side of the body or the left visual field. And when I say neglect, I don't mean that they don't see it, that, that, that they're not seeing things in their left visual field or they're not seeing their left hand, but they may communicate that things in their left field don't exist. They have no existence. They talk about not recognizing their own hand or their foot, okay? And so if you ask somebody to draw pictures, for example, of a clock and they don't have hemispatial neglect, they draw a clock. But somebody with hemispatial neglect will put all of the numbers on the right side, neglecting the left. Uh, same with a house. Draw a house. They draw this, neglecting the left side. Here's a cat. Here's a cat drawn by somebody with hemispatial neglect. Okay? And I've seen this in person as kind of an odd thing. Um, 
I, I knew somebody with a stroke to the parietal, right parietal lobe, and he talked about wanting to walk. Well, his left side of his body didn't work. And he just simply said, I won't pay attention to that. I'll just walk. Like it didn't exist. Okay. Now, one way to test lateralization is you can do this, in, you can test some lateralization using electroencephalogram, you can do it using MRIs, but one way is called the WADA test. And the WADA test is oftentimes given to people who um, have to get open brain surgery. Because if you're doing open brain surgery and you're having to dig into the brain, you do not want to damage really vital areas for, let's say, language. Now, if the person's right-handed, you could say, oh, well, of course, their um, language is on the left side of the brain, 95% of the time, but 5% it's not. And you need to determine which side of the brain it has certain functions, because you can't be 100% sure. So what you do is you anesthetize one side of the brain by injecting a uh, sodium amytal or sodium amobarbital and it, it anesthetizes and the person's awake and then you start giving them tests and you find out if in fact I put the left hemisphere to sleep what happens to their language skills if they still have their language skills and they're still speaking and understanding then this is a rare person and their language might be located on the right hemisphere so oftentimes people who get surgery get each side of the brain anesthetized and they're given a, sen a, a, a series of tests. So what happens if the corpus callosum is split? Remember how I talked to you about the importance about how the left and right hemisphere are just communicating constantly with each other to solve problems, to um, think about language, understanding language, understanding communication. But sometimes people get their corpus callosum severed, cut. And this is not, it doesn't happen as much today, but it, it was pretty common back in the 60s and 70s with the idea that if somebody has epilepsy, a seizure, and that seizure is traveling from one hemisphere to the other, that can be extremely dangerous and even deadly. And so what you want, you don't want that massive amount of electrical activity going from one side of the brain through the corpus callosum to the other. You want to stop it in its tracks. Well, how do you do that? You cut the corpus callosum. And if they have a seizure that starts on the left hemisphere, it doesn't make its way to the right hemisphere. But it kind of creates two brains. Um, if you met somebody with a uh, split head head, split brain surgery, you probably wouldn't tell. They, they can function just fine. But oftentimes the left hand and the right hand don't know what each one is doing. Um, and that can create some odd circumstances. They move independently. And there's a lot of tests on people with split brain. For example, uh, try this. Try putting a pencil in your left and right hand. And at the same time, try to draw a circle and a square. Draw a circle with your right hand and a square with your left hand. Give that a try. That's really hard to do. But somebody with a split brain, they are able to do it because the two hands are working independently. But there's been a lot of work um, by um, researchers about the idea of what happens in the split brain. And here's just an example of an experiment. It talks about the fact that it doesn't allow visual information to cross over. So somebody is sitting here, and they see a face, and that face is in their right visual field, so it goes to the left hemisphere. And if this person has a specialization of language in their left hemisphere, as most do, they're able to say that's a face. They're able to verbally say it's a face. However, if it's on the left side here, the left visual field being processed contralaterally by the right hemisphere, they aren't able to say verbally that that's a face, that they see a face, they see nothing. But they can use their left hand, which is governed by the right hemisphere, to draw a face or to pick a face 
um, out of out of a lineup. Okay, so okay, so that's kind of an interesting way to look at specialization of the left and the right hemisphere. Hope you enjoyed the lecture.